Thank you so much. I hope, I hope that you have spent some time to go shopping. During this time that we are practicing social distancing so that people will not be wiped out en masse, uh, we gave you opportunity since Monday. Today is Friday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, five days for you to go shopping. Go and shop for toiletries, food, cleaning supplies, the basic things that you need. I hope you've shopped for them. I hope you've, I'm not asking you to pile it up high. Just take something that can last you for a month or two. We don't know when this thing will come to an end. We don't know. And let me tell you the truth. All those prophets and pastors who are going about fighting and praying against Corona, they are 100% stupid people. I'm just letting you know this. They are idiots. I hate, I hate that some pastors are praying against Corona and all of that. They are idiots. You don't pray against viruses. You don't pray against a plague. It's a plague. You get involved in scientific discoveries and exploration. You practice what the medical community asks you to do so that people stay healthy. So if you are a pastor and you are still calling people to come together in your church during this time, God will punish you. I'm telling you the truth. And those of you who are going about giving prophecies from TB Joshua to Yakilome, is it Chris or Yakilome or whatever they call each of those people, to the Swagger's family. Those of you who are going about saying that Corona is a Democrat thing or is a Satan thing, this is a virus. This is a virus. So I'm asking each of you to get back to your little caves and dens and go and hide there. And stop disturbing, stop disturbing the television and stop disturbing the internet with your stupid prophecies. Because we don't want to hear it anymore. We are tired of seeing your faces and hearing your voices. And what I'm telling you, God has asked me to say this to you. T.B. Joshua, Chris Oyakilome, the Swaggers and the rest of you. And there are many pastors out there who are going about saying that when the vaccines for Corona... COVID-19 comes that people should not take it. God will punish you also. This is not the time for prophecy. This is not the time to be praying against Corona. This is time for you to invest your brain and your mind. Go and get money and send it to the scientific communities and let them discover medicine to help human beings. That's what we need in our generation. We don't need your prayer. We don't need your prayer because your prayer do not pass the ceiling. Your prophecy do not pass the ceiling. You are trying to make yourself important and relevant in a time like this that you should be preparing your congregations and your people for them to be healthy. Let us pray. Eternal Father, we thank you that at this time you've given us the brain and the mind for us to know what to do to save our lives. We thank you for the for the medical for medical science and biotechnology. We thank you for those who work day and night to find solutions to the problems of humanity. We ask you to bless us as we work hard for money as we triumph for your kingdom that we will invest it to health care and to happiness in the name of christ jesus we pray amen amen and amen a few years ago by the way my name is most reverend Idikai mary you might be surprised that as a pentecostal and as a traditional church leader that i should be on your side for you to gather prayer meeting to be praying against Corona, you must be an idiot to be thinking that way. So listen carefully to what I'm going to tell you. 
Christianity is not a religion for idiots or for fools. It's not, it's not, uh, for some of you will say, why do I call somebody an idiot? Yes, some people qualify to be called idiots. People want to use religion and church and Holy Ghost and all these things and the Bible to put you in a situation that you will not like. Lizzie, we are the conference call. Join us. We are the conference line. Thank you. Excuse me. People want to use religion to control you and you allow them. Few years ago, a top Christian leader did not allow his congregation to go and take the measles vaccine. I have the measles vaccine inside my body. I have it. I have the virus in me. So if measles break out, it can't catch me. I have shots for whooping cough, tetanus. Is it rub uh, rubella? What is it called? Roslyn. Is it rubella? Yeah. 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 Every vaccine that somebody should have that the public should have that will protect my life on it, I have it inside me. Everyone, meningitis, just name it. Whooping cough, I have them in me. And you will not allow your people. You are trying to play with human lives. Are you serious? Who do you think you are? That you are God Almighty? If you had the power, why haven't you cured every one of AIDS? Why haven't you, why, why don't you pray and the virus will just die and get away? And Corona will die and go away. I'm talking to you leaders. You should be ashamed of yourself. You should be ashamed of yourself, but I know that devils have no shame. Many of you, because you failed in your professional career, that's why you became pastors. That's why you became bishops and prophets and, and, and whatever title you hold. If you like, go and pray. Go to your altars and pray for me. And try to pray bad prayer. That's where you will perish. Because let me tell you, God will never forgive any of you for leading people astray. He will never forgive any of you. That's why I keep saying that hell will be filled with pastors and priests and bishops and prophets. Because you think that people are stupid. Look at this man. What is his name? Is it Jim Baker? Is that his name? What is his name? The one that used to have praise the Lord, PTL. Yeah. Yeah. He's going about selling some fake medication that will cure Corona. Can you imagine that? He has not learned any lesson from going to jail. He's still out there using the Bible to, to cheat people, to talk rubbish. When, when are these people going to stop? Jimmy Swaggart's son is going about telling people that Corona is a Democrat's, Democrat's fake. Can you imagine that? You are watching how people are dying in China and Italy and you are coming to tell people this rubbish. How can the Holy Ghost forgive you? How can God the Father and Jesus forgive you? There is a place for politics. But don't bring politics to where you have, where human life is in danger. I don't, I, I don't, I don't like this. It's, it's very annoying. I watched T.B. Joshua the other day. Somebody sent me a, trying to do a prophecy on Corona. And people are clapping in Nigeria. You go to Nigeria, you have all these mega churches. People are coming and filling it up. And the same people, they are poor and broke. Nothing. No good road, no electricity. You can see a very beautiful house in Nigeria. But go inside it, nothing. No brain. I wonder what will happen to all of you in Nigeria when the oil finish. When there will be no oil in Nigeria, I wonder what is going to keep you all together. I wonder how many of you will want to be politicians, senators and presidents. You are all, you are all going to Abuja and to Lagos because there is oil in Portacot and oil in my city where I was born. 
What I'm talking to you, I'm talking to you because I know. I was born at Akex. If you want to know, I'm in Uweka. I'm in Uweka. I'm in Uweka. I'm in Uweka. Okay? You don't need to be born. It's you. You don't need to be born. So if you are from the Igbo land, from the Eastern, you hate me now. God help you. Ha <laughs> ha! Because you don't need to be born. Everywhere is filled with church, church, church. But the people have no brain to think of what to do for themselves that will make let Corona go in there to wipe everybody out because there's nothing there. There's no preparation. I watched Haiti during the earthquake. People were using their hand to try to dig. There was nothing, nothing there in Haiti. No preparation for anything. People just want to give us this day a daily bread. That's all they think and they don't know the meaning of it. And people died like flies in Haiti because government has nothing, individuals have nothing to prepare for when things happen. So that's why I'm calling you, if you are my partner, please, we don't know, this thing might continue. Remember, it was prophesied to us by the guy Mary. The year 2020 is the year of drama. This is March. We've already had enough drama. We are tired of drama already. We're really tired of it. So this might continue till next year. What we are dealing with now might continue till next year. Who knows? If you have a child who is out for spring break party, can you place a phone call and tell them to come home? This is not the time to be traveling and to go and party and club. Stay home. Tell your kid to stay home. Because even more young people are dying of the corona. So if you're a young person and you think it's an old people, oh, they said it's only for people who are 60s and 70s and 80s and above. You're fooling yourself. It will just come and take you quietly. You start getting sick from there, it's on. So stay away. Stay home and do your homework. Stay home and help your parent. Stay home and start learning how to fix a tire, how to do this, how to do that. I am what I am today because my mother's brother and my father taught me what a man should know. Let's go to the reading for today. The Old Testament reading. A reading from 1 Samuel chapter 15 verses 22 to 31. And Samuel said, Have the Lord of great delight in both offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than
And also the strength of Israel will not lie nor repent. For he is not a man that he should repent. Then he says, I have sinned, yet honor me now, I pray thee, before the elders of my people and before Israel, and turn again with me that I may worship the Lord thy God. So Samuel turned again after Saul, and Saul worshipped the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The reading from the New Covenant. The reading is taken from Ephesians 5, verse 1 through 9. Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Jesus Christ loved us and gave himself and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But among you, there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or of any kind of impurity or of greed, because these are improper for God's holy people. Nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. For of this you can be sure, no immoral, impure, or greedy person, such a person is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of such things, God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore, do not be partners with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. The end of the reading. Thanks be to God. For Saul, the first king of Israel, worshipping the Lord was a political thing. It was part of consolidating power. Saul did not know how to be a king and allow Samuel to be the prophet that he was. Samuel too did not know how to be a prophet and allow Saul to remain a king only. So both of them clash. A clash of two thrones. Because the two offices used to be the office of Samuel. And God decided to make life easier for Samuel. So when the, 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 the Hebrew children asked for a king, Samuel opposed it while God approved it. Think about that. Many a times we are we are very extreme. We do certain things thinking that we are doing it for God. But in reality, God looks into us and knows that we are not doing it for him. We are doing it for ourselves. Wow. Yeah. Oh God, look at how they will push you. Look at how they say they want a king. You know, it's not, it's, they, they are attacking you. And when Samuel went to God to say, to repeat the same thing, and God, God did not even answer Samuel. God only said to Samuel, do what the people want. We are going to give them a king. Because God knew that that was the right thing to do. Samuel alone cannot be king and priest high priest, prophet, and leader. After all, whoever is king is under Samuel. And I don't think that Samuel was happy that his children, he, one of his sons was not chosen. Neither did God said, Samuel, be the king and be the prophet at the same time. 
Go and say no. Somebody else has to do that. Because God knows the enormity of what it is to just be one thing. One thing is already a whole lot. So all the days of Samuel and Saul, it was a clash, a drama, constant drama of trauma. And both of them died sad. Both of them died sad. Even Saul will not allow Samuel to rest in the land of the dead. He went after him and said, come out here and talk to me whether you like it or not. And a witch brought Samuel out. Because both of them hated each other. That's why, that's why, that's why when you see somebody whose business doesn't matter how great they are, but they start going bankruptcy upon bankruptcy, closure upon closure of one business after another, they are constantly starting and constantly ending. Something is wrong. Every control freak is going to die a sad person. Every control freak. Yeah. When you discover that anybody in your life is a control freak, don't take them serious. Here, Samuel want to walk away after telling Saul what God was saying. You can imagine how the brawl each of them were in each other's row row they were in each other's row row let's talk like caribbeans now yeah <laughs> yeah row row yep so you see Samuel was on KMA, Saul, Saul was on KMA, Samuel. Each refused to KMA each other. And instead, they were knocking, they, they, were, they were doing some serious knocking down of each other's life. So that none of them could concentrate to do their job all the days of their lives. Do you guys know that Samuel suffered from a heavy depression? Saul suffered from depression to lunacy. I'm serious. And that also destroyed the children of Samuel. That's why many a time it's good to give up something and give it up completely. Don't try to control it. When you give somebody a job to do, let them do the job. Saul lay hold on Samuel and Samuel's clothes tore. Saul was trying to bring Samuel back by force. Samuel should respect him, he's the king. Let these people know that really I'm king. Let them know that you honor me. So it was no longer about religion. It was no longer about God. Both of them were using God to destroy each other and to destroy the nation, and they did. And it all affected one person in the future, paid the price for both of their foolishness, and that was David. David paid the price. And other prophets paid the price too with their lives. Because one man called Samuel refused to let go of power. And one man called King Saul refused to allow priests and prophets to do their job. He wanted to control them. And in today's world, that is what is happening. Leaders of nations want to pay 
prophets and priests and pastors, they paid them out. And they've shut them down. And the will of God is not being spoken. Who among American pastors and prophets can speak like I speak in today's world? Show me one person. They are afraid that they will lose their money. They are afraid that they will lose their people because they must appear to look good. They must appear to be nice. They must appear to be intelligent. They must appear to be very political. They must appear to be very connected. They must appear to be... Um, how, there is a word. Professional. Corporate. And that's why God walked away from all of them. Where is woman thou art lose? Where is manpower? Where are the days of old? When money show up, people do what? Shut up. That's what the Holy Ghost told us. Samuel refused to yield. Saul refused to yield. And the entire nation suffered. In our world of today, it is not about Samuel and Saul. God is out of the equation. God is not involved in a lot of things that is happening in our today's world. A lot of people are using God's name to do a lot of bad things. Can you imagine people already? The coronavirus vaccine has not yet been produced. People are already, pastors are already prophesying that when it comes out, you should not take it. What are you trying to gain by doing all this? If the Lord decides to start killing all pastors, like he would like to, destroy them and prophets, people will say he's a bad God. But why can't you just resist? Why should anybody in his right mind be gathering people and be praying against coronavirus? When the money, if you have so much money in your church, you should be giving to the biotechnology or loan it to them for them to expedite bringing out. Because nations are broke, let's face it. A lot of nations have been living on a prayer and pretending like they are wealthy. They've been cooking up the book. Let me say like the British. They say they've been cooking up the book. A lot of nations have been broke the last 20, 30 years. They've been broke. The books have been cooked. Banks have been cooking up the books. Corporations have been cooking up the book to make themselves look good. And they are really broke. Don't think we don't know. Samantha, look for that verse that talks about rebellion and stubbornness. What the Bible says about it in, in the book of Samuel that you read to us a while back, a, a while ago. You read it? Okay, read it. Let's hear it so that you guys should know. Because those of you who are going about doing all this prophecy, praying against uh, Corona and all of that, you should be ashamed of yourself. You should be ashamed of yourself. You should know when there is a plague, when there is a judgment, and when there is a virus. And many of you pastors and prophets and do not know. And many of you politicians don't even know how to shut up and follow the medical community. When are you politicians going to get out of this? Because God will punish you if you keep leading people astray and people keep losing their lives. If China has listened to the, to, the, to the medical doctors who sounded the alarm since last year, a long time, and said, this thing is coming, they, they locked them down. They shut them down. Today, they pay the, China paid the price for it. 
they were scientists and doctors who warned the Chinese government that this is coming. This is what they've seen. Why is it that people don't want to listen? And they criticize them, the enemies of the people. They don't like the government. They don't like Chinese people. These are Chinese medical doctors. And today China has paid the price for it. They would have been prepared a long time ago and would have stopped this. We Americans would have been prepared for this when we saw what was happening in China. Knowing that most 90% of our goods and services come from China. We would have been prepared for it. Each nation of the world, you should be ashamed of yourself. If you are a leader of the world, you should be ashamed of yourself. You politicians should be ashamed of yourself. And you pastors who hide behind the scene to use God's name. That I have asked God to punish each and every one of you. Because you are murderers and killers. The blood of the world is in your hands. And they are crying out before God. Long time ago when we saw what was happening in China and Korea, we would have been prepared for it. I have called most of you partners to go. I have given you five days. Go and shop for cleaning supplies, toiletries. Just take one day and go. You want when the rush starts. That's when you like the rush. I don't know why you do that. Are there enough toothpaste? New toothbrushes? Many of you, the toothbrushes you've been using to brush since the day that Noah entered the ark. That's the one you are still using. That's the same toothbrush. Wow, that's there you go. When are you going to change the head of your toothbrushes? The same lotion you've been using that old mama Mata gave you and your skin is cracking up it's cracking up like you on like crack cocaine you've not changed it to something that suits your body how many of you have vitamin c some lemons some ginger in the house i'm I not do. yeah I do, I do. good I do. normal things Turmeric, things that you should have. I do. Enough toiletries. You go to go and buy toilet paper and uh, toilet uh, and uh, toilet roll. You go and buy and paper towel. You go and pick one or two mm -hmm. instead of buying the entire twenty-four thing inside one rack and carry it and go. <laughs> Poverty mentality syndrome. You just pick one and pay a dollar or 99 cent and, and then you stand there to look for the change. <laughs> and now that is and now when people are rushing for it, that's when you go to stand in the line. You don't want to do it like your leader is telling you to do. When I go, I buy like those things. I buy them like six. I buy like six rack. Each of them will contain like 20 something for each. And then I'll buy like six of it and put it in the house. That's the way I shop. You saw me talking about buying fish that is 60 pounds. Fish. I'll eat that fish like, whoa. If you open my freezer, it's full of kale and spinach. Things that is so healthy for you. And these are things that you don't eat them all at once. You make a little bit of soup with this, a little bit, bake some in the oven, and chew and drink water. You are so healthy forever. When last did you go to see a chiropractor? I went yesterday. My body was cracking as the guy was putting me back in shape. When last did you see one? You think seeing a medical doctor is enough? And the pain might be coming because your bone is out of place. <sighs> Isn't that okay to see an acupuncturist? Very good. See one, my dear. Maybe you need to see one. Yeah. See an acupuncture? Yeah. See one. Right. Those guys are good. Yes, we do. I believe in medicine. 
I believe in if there is anybody who prays, I pray more than anybody. I pray in tongues more than anybody. I see God's face. I have a bragging right to this because this is my profession. This is what I do. This is my life. But when somebody who believes in healing, and I have seen so much healing, just wait until each of you read my profile that is coming out either tonight or tomorrow. Then you will see how many people have been healed of different things. In fact, we cut it shut. We did not want to put everything because it will be too long for people to read. So we just summarize the most important ones. I believe in so much of the healing of Jesus. I have seen a lot of it. People have called me, oh, I'm going for a heart transplant. I'm going for this. And they come. And I just made fun of it. I said, okay, let's pray. And I said, God, give this person a new heart. And they reach the hospital. They reach the surgical suite the next day. And the doctor said, well, we have to take a second look to really make sure whether this thing really deserves a surgery or not. And they said, you don't need it now. Let's go for more tests. Like that, like that, they didn't need to have it. Because a simple prayer spoken from the mind of a child, because I am a child, innocency was released. And that solved every problem. And so when I tell you, be healthy, look beautiful, you should listen to me. Go and shop for what you need in life. You should listen to me. Go and get common bleach. For those of you for whom bleach is good for, bleach is not good for me. When I smell bleach, I start to bleed in the nose, so I don't like bleach. So I have alternative to bleach. You should know what your body cannot tolerate. But when you dissolve bleach in water to use to sanitize, okay, that's fine. That is fine. Cleaning supplies should be there in the house. Lysol should be there. At least once a month, you should have the Lysol that you spray in the bathroom, in the laundry room, in the in the in the bedroom, in the living room while you go while you go outside. After like an hour or two, you come back, everything has subsided. You need to be healthy, my dear. You need to be healthy. If you don't want to be healthy for you, be healthy for me. Let, let me profit. Let me profit from that. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Are you aware that the shoe you're wearing can be the reason for the pain you're having? Do you know that? The shoe you're wearing might be the reason for the pain you're having. And that is why when you reach the age of 20, 30, you should start thinking of wearing what we call healthy shoes. Not just that a shoe is breaking your legs, you are feeling pain, you are wearing it because you want to look nice. And you are walking like a Humpty Dumpty soldier. Brim, 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 brim. All over the place. And pain is killing you. But you want to look good. <laughs> it's like when I am on the news trip in Las Vegas. And you... There you need tennis shoes or sandals. You don't need no high heel, no high heel koi koi shoe. Because it's a long walk from one, from the south side of the strip all the way to the north side of the strip, all the way to the center strip. Where you have center strip is where you have like Arias, Vedaro Hotel, Arias Casino, um, Planet Hollywood, Paris, um, Bali. Bellagio, all that. That center strip. You know how far is it? From Mandela Bay, that's where it starts. From the Lino, Mandela Bay, all the way to those places. It's long. You need a sandals or you need a boot that is flat or a tennis shoes. You see some people wearing high heel shoes and they cannot even walk. There was one time I'm coming back from, uh, I'm coming from uh, Treasure Island. I'm coming back to Mandela Bay and I want to stop by a uh, Park MGM at the Italian, Italian uh, market there 
for them to bake something for me. They, they cook for me. They cook it from the scratch. One woman, she's tired of doing the show for her husband or boyfriend or man friend, whoever it is. She actually, she's like, <laughs> I'm just telling you what she said. She's like, I can't walk anymore, so she stopped. She stopped, she can't walk anymore. She asks, she asks a man to call a taxi <laughs> for them to go back to their hotel. I was laughing so high. You know me, my ear is always eavesdropping. My ear is always eavesdropping. Don't blame me, blame Diane. Blame Diane Lucky. That's the one she taught me how to eavesdrop. <laughs> My ear was him dropping, hearing what they are saying. I said, say, Diane, you see what you have done? You see what you've made? Yep, this is the monster oh you produce. Goodness. So, I yeah, I know. So, I am like, I am like, I'm trying to open a bubble gum and take one bubble gum and put it in my mouth. But I'm actually, the main reason I'm actually doing that to make people not to think, why am I stopping? I'm eavesdropping and I'm watching them. And you know what happened? The man was saying, oh no, I don't have the app. I don't have Uber app. And the woman curses out at him. You don't have no Uber app. Why did you bring me out here? Then I knew that's not the wife. There's something going on underly, underly. And then he said, then let's call a taxi. Let's call a taxi. And the man said, but the hotel is over there. And the lady is going, do you know how far over there is with this shoe I'm wearing? So, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So she removed the shoe. This is what she did. She removed the shoe and gave it to him to hold. He said, you asked me to wear this so that I can look good for you. And you can parade and show me off. The woman was actually nice. But she is not as beautiful as all my partners. Forget about that. I'll never agree. <laughs> so she gave the man the shoe. These shoes are heavy. And the man goes, I didn't know how heavy this shoe is. And the woman said, really? You have to hold this shoe? The woman began to walk. Walk on barefoot. Thank God on the right side across the street is a store and they have flip-flops there and on the other side is a is that a cvs pharmacy i think that's what they call it cvs pharmacy not a walgreen she walked in there i was still standing where i was standing and i was watching them Woo! thank you diane and i was hey. watching them yeah <laughs> I was still there watching them. Then I crossed the street and I went inside CVS Pharmacy to go and look for water. But you know, I'm watching them because I really, I wanted to write the drama. I wanted when I reach my hotel, I'm going to document it. And the man was standing far away and the woman was testing some flip-flop until she found one, one flip-flop. And she picked it and he came and he paid for it and then she went around and picked stuff pick some stuff pick some things that she would like to give to people when she when they go home that says las vegas or welcome to very thing like and the and the man was saying do you need all of this she said yes i do so why do you need it? he said yeah people will ask me you went to vegas and the man goes did you tell people that you were going to vegas and the woman said yes i did he said but why do you need to and the woman goes, what about if you kill me? They don't know who you are. So I have to. So the man goes, did you give them my information? Did you give them my name and my phone number? She said, yes. She, and the man was like, to hell with you. And the woman said, F you, F you too. Everybody were just like looking and looking at two of them. And I say, smart girl, smart girl. Smart girl, you gave them my name and you gave them my phone number and my address in case anything happened to you. What do you think I'm going to do with you? And the girl goes, every man, every man. And the man goes, I'm not every man. And the girl goes, how long have I known you? I've not known you. 
up to six months. So why should I trust you? I say, good gracious, I'm loving this drama. I love it. And I'm out there sipping some water and watching. And the man was going in front and the girl was far behind. I like that girl because she put her life and herself first. The man is bringing, bringing her to Vegas to come and have a lot of sex, have fun, and the girl is coming for business. Business first. If anything happened to, to her, they know the person to hold. She went with you. I like that. I like that. Read that portion of scripture for us, please. Okay, stop. If, if if you are dealing with rebellion, every little thing you rebel. When somebody who knows more than you, when somebody who is supposed to train you is about to do that, you rebel. If you are somebody who cannot take instruction and order from somebody who come to really be of help to you, I'm not talking of people who want you to just obey them. They, they, are forcing or they are forcing obedience out of you. Those are not the people I'm talking about. Because there are people who all they want is to throw their leadership style all over the place for you to know, hey, here comes the boss. Even though they have nothing to offer to you, they want you to obey. Like some political party wants you to fall, fall, fall in line. Don't question. Uh-uh. That's not the kind of rebellion we are talking about. When people want you to do bad things, you have to rebel. You have to say, no, I'm not going to do this. But this is a different kind of rebellion. This is when you are asked to do something good. And you don't want to do it. You don't want to help yourself. You don't want to put yourself first. There are some people I will ask, if you inherit $20 million, what will you do? If you win $20 million, what will you do? If somebody give you $20 million, what will you do? If you do your job and you hit $20 million, the first thing they will tell you is, oh, I will, I will, I will help the homeless. I say, really? You will help the homeless. Right. Then the first thing I will ask them is, has the homeless helped you? That's the question I always ask them. You want to go and help the homeless and the poor and the sick and, the, and all of this. And I say, have the poor helped you? Have the homeless help you? I want to go and give to my church. And I say, stop, 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 brother or stop, sister. Has your church helped you? Do all of you know, do all of you know that we have finance put, put together for each of my partners in case the worst come to the worst? Because of this corona. If the government doesn't have money to take care of people, my partners are good to go. Do you all know that? If you go to your local store, they run out of bleach, toilet roll, toilet paper, basic toiletries, call me. Do you know that I'm set, I'm ready for all those things? Since Monday, I have plan with this group, I have planned with this company, I have planned with this, I have planned with that. How things will get to you within a day or two. 
or they will be shipped right. I have people who will come into my house here and ship them right from here. Show me a church that is ready like that. If the bank decide that there is no more, there is no more money, everything freezes up. Every of my partners is good to go. Because I'm prepared ahead of time for, for all this. So you want to go and if you hit 20 million, you are going to give it to your church. And I ask, has your church given to you? <laughs> you want to go and take care of your church? Your greedy church? That if something happened to you, they are not there for you. I want to see enough food in each of your pantry. Enough cleaning supplies, toiletries, enough things that you are going to use for a long time. Because what the corona is revealing, if you all do not know, part of this corona thing is, <laughs> is what we call the mask man syndrome. It's a judgment, part of it. Telling the nations, start producing for yourselves again. Because the nations of the world abandoned all their production, the agricultural, except thank God for, for, for California and some other states that are into raising cattle or raising corn like Kansas and Illinois and Nebraska and all these states and Iowa. Thank God for the food baskets. But majority of the people of our world and so many nations including African nations, Caribbean nations, Middle East, lot of them, they've abandoned agriculture. They've abandoned industries. They left it for China to do because it's cheaper to, to be done in China and to be shipped in from China. And the corona is leaving us with messages. Get back to what you used to do to provide for yourselves. Every year, Ladri makes a big, huge garden. Every year, that girl makes a huge garden. Every year. You don't know how happy I am to see that. I will never, never buy a home that is going to be for personal use that I will not have a lot of acres behind for me to put animals, for me to have a big farm, big garden going on. Go back to farming. Look at South Africa is broke. Last month they they declared them broke. They are into depression. In re, re, whatever we call it. The country is depressed. And the country has gone into recession. Why? They've agreed. No more agriculture. No industries. Everything is shipped from China. And now that China is having problem, the containers are not coming in anymore. They have to ration it. You are being told now, start making your own. Start learning how to make your own soap, your own lotion, your own this, your own that. Those are things that parents taught their kids how to do. Those are the things we learn from our parents how to do oil change, how to change this. If your tire got broke, how to do it? I learned all of this from my father. If I'm suffering from so and so sickness, what medication do I need? If I'm about to go into a heart attack, what medicine should I ask the doctor to shoot me? I have it all. That's why when I had a cardiac problem, when I came to America newly, they wanted to shoot me. Come on, and I called the doctor. No, 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 no. I'm not yet 50. You can't shoot that on me. He said, how do you know that is to be used on people from 50? I said, because my father was a pharmacist. And I learned. He, his eyes was big. Like a bubble head. He was looking at me. Really? 
You are not a doctor. You are saying I'm not, but this is what you you guys should shoot me this. And I don't want it on my arm. I want it on my belly. He said, you know exactly where, and I need only two shots. He said, what again do you want? I said, put me on ibuprofen or Advil regimen for a month. I think I'll be fine. And that's exactly what they did. You live your life in the hands of doctors. You are joking. You are really joking. You are living your life in the hands of China. You are joking. And now look at it. We are in a situation in which we cannot produce for ourselves because we've given up everything to a foreign country. <sighs> and now Trump is busy quarreling with China that they brought. <laughs> They brought the corona. <laughs> and China is accusing accusing him that it was the American soldiers that brought it to China. And they are, is that what? Is that what? The politicians are the worst drama, drama people that I've ever seen. My goodness. See, if you just want to laugh, look at look at look at politicians. You will just be laughing like Yeah, they are they are full of I don't even know whether they know that they are they are actors and actresses that that is the way we see them we don't take them serious that is, that is yeah this morning one of our partners was coming back from her job and there were people and there were things by the side of the road that they have some placards they have some banners and some sign signboard that says if you listen to trump trump will kill all of you <laughs> <laughs> Because Trump, Trump, Trump now is a medical doctor. Doctor, doctor of Corona. Dr. Trump. I'm going to send him a tweet and thank him for being a medical doctor. I'm going to thank him. Dr. Trump, my presido. That's how I would address him. Dr. Trump, my presido. <laughs> KMA. Roslyn, you know what that means. <laughs> Dr. Trump, my, my prezi do, yep. know, knows all the answers, got all the medication. <laughs> Woo, I like Trump. Yeah, I really, I like Trump. I like him, you know. <laughs> He's a survivor, you know. At least he has been a president. He's tried. Yep. Somebody told me, why is Trump and uh, Nancy Pelosi always fighting? I say it's simply a case of two mutual wizard and witch. <laughs> then I told the person, I say. Are you not aware that Trump is married to Nancy Pelosi? Don't you know that? Don't you know that Trump is married to Nancy Pelosi? They are married couples. Yep. One is a witch and one is a wizard. And that's fine. <laughs> Another person asked me, why is Trump always saying things about Obama? I said, because he likes Obama and Obama is his brother. Obama is Trump's brother, even though Trump doesn't want to come out to say it. That's his family. And, and, and the junior should not have been a president before the senior. And Obama went before Trump, and Trump didn't like that. So that's Obama went ahead to prepare the way for Trump. I say he's just joking. It doesn't mean any of that. They are brothers. Ah. He likes him. And not only that, Obama is the demon, the virus that, in, that is in the blood of Trump. Not allowing the man to have any peace. That's why the man constantly is talking about him. <laughs> because he's a virus in his blood. He's the demon in his life. 
So whenever ba, when, yeah, whenever Obama rumble inside him, blah, 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 he goes and tweet. It's because of Obama that the CDC. It's because of Obama of this. It's because because their guys inside living inside his head and making him to become a lunatic. God, somebody should, somebody should. Uh, what is it? Somebody should deliver Trump from Obama. Obama got him. Woo! That's terrible. Woo! Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And stubbornness like There you go. I want all of you to do everything to stay alive. Do not rebel against the medical community. Wash your hands, especially with liquid soap. Whenever you go outside to come in, wash your hands with liquid soap. Have enough things that is going to last you for the next three, four months. Have it. Don't try to travel right now. Don't try to travel. It's not safe. I want all of your life. Keep your eyes on the promises God has made you. Because I don't want to lose any of you. You have an assignment to do on the earth. You are very keen. The sound is not good. Keep your eye fastened on your assignment on the earth. Take care of your little ones if you have little ones. Check on your families regularly. Check on them. You have a destiny to fulfill. You have not yet made your first millions and celebrated it. You are going to be alive and do it. Don't be like some people who are looking for a way out of this world to run away from responsibility and they want to die. Those of you who want to run away from your responsibility on the earth, Corona is not coming for you because you are going to be alive and take care of the children that you have made all over the earth. All of you men who have been going about going from one woman to the other making babies, Corona is not coming for you because you are going to stay alive and walk your butt off to take care of those kids. And I don't want any excuse. Any woman out there that has a man who has been sowing his wild seeds from one woman to the other and have children all over, if they try to die of corona, call me. I'm coming with a big stick to hit them on the head. <laughs> <laughs> they have to stay alive. They have to stay alive and take care of their kids. You are not going anywhere. You are not going to use corona to run away. No. No. All of you heard of the lo locusts that came to East Africa. So it's like one drama after another. So while the rest of the world is dealing with corona, East Africa is dealing with a plague of locusts. So much, everything has been eaten from Congo to Rwanda to Kenya. They've been eaten down. All the crops oh have been eaten. And I've been speaking about judgment on East Africa for a while now. Here it comes. Julie, one of our Kenyan sister that lives somewhere here in America, she's in the medical field. I've asked God to give her a very good job in the medical field. The locusts came to her mother's farm. Her mother grows tea. She plants tea, the leaf that is used for making tea. She has a big land. The locusts came there. They did not eat one single, not one single leaf that is unheard of. She called me the day before yesterday and she told me this news. She said, I want to tell you something. Said the locusts came on the mother's tea farm. Tea, T-E-A. The tea we drink, the mother, the mother grows tea. Uh -huh. And the locusts came on it. They didn't eat not one, not one leaf. 
They came there like they came there for vacation and then they flew and left and went to other farm and ate up everything. So what do you call that? What's the meaning of that? Is that, is that, did it just happen that the local just came there? And came and slept there? Do you hear of locals going anywhere to go and sleep there? And woke up the next day and the wind took them to somewhere else. Forget about it. That's not how they do it. They come to eat. They love to eat. And they came to her mother's farm and came there and make some new babies and move on. So that is that is something. I said to her, do you call this a miracle? She said, yep. Yeah. She said to me, your prayers is affecting my family even in Kenya. Say good. They are eating up every farm. You have heard, have you not seen what the United Nations have released for people to start contributing to the fund to take care of East Africa? Because while the rest of the world is, is running, is fleeing because of Corona, East Africa is fleeing because of no food. They are going to suffer a major famine this year because the plague of locusts have eaten every crop away. They finish everything. Oh God. Yep. So there will be no harvest. Oh my God. Oh. Oh my goodness. I want us to reach a place in our mission where we will have various warehouses in different parts of the world and states. And they are stocked up with the basic necessities that human beings gonna need. So that in times like this, we have warehouses to sell stuff. Mary, Mary sat down to write some laws for me. There is what we call the laws and the anointing of Joseph. Because it is at this time that you should be selling certain things that you put away for a time like this. This is just the first plague you are seeing. The plague of locusts and the plague of the virus, this is the first you are seeing because it will keep coming. But it's not coming near my partners anywhere. People will ask me, why are you not praying for the world? I say, they are not worth praying for. Then I should pray for the whole world. Really? Is the whole world praying for me? I'm a business archbishop. So mine is, what is the profit and benefit in it for me and my partners? That's all. You want me to go and pray for free for people? Are you serious? What is in it for me? Let's ask that question. I told a lady, I said, you are getting crazy over this man. For the last two years you've been with him. What has he done for you? Oh, he said he loves me. He writes me love letters. He sent me cards. I said, have there been any cash inside that card? She said, no. Any money order? She said, no. Any check? She said, no. Has he helped, bought you a car? She said, no. Has she sent you to college because you always talk about going to college? She said, no. Has she ever brought it up? She said, no. I said, really? Oh and you say he really loves you? She said, yes. I say, if he did not start doing this, has he gone shopping for you? When he come to visit you? She said, no. Seriously. Has he mowed the lawn? She said, no. Has she ever do the dishes? Or the laundry? She said, no. She said, but that is not what a man does. Has she cooked for you? She said, a man doesn't cook. I said, you know what? The day that both of you will be in the court, don't call me because the Holy Spirit have given you a sign that that guy is, that guy is a bad person. You think kiss and hug and sex will support the relationship? Just wait. You will soon see more than that. 
I told the girl, I have thrown fire into your relationship and your relationship gonna die. And I have thrown fire into your emotion and your emotion for him and his emotion for you gonna die because it's based on a lie and sorcery. And he did. This man is making a whole lot of money and doesn't has never even paid your light bill. You are the one who has been buying things for this man. And this man has not been buying things for you. Are you serious? Could you imagine that the man is even asking the girl to buy the ring for them to have a, what do you call it? What do you call before the wedding, the, the something that they have to... Engagement. engagement. It is the girl who is going to buy two engagement ring. Are you serious? <laughs> What kind of nonsense is this? What kind of stupidity is this? And you are calling this love? A man that come to mooch on you. And you agree. You are buying him pants, shirts, ties, shoes for him to wear and go to his office. So can't he buy for himself? He's not doing anything for you. He's coming to that house and sexing you like a prostitute. And you agree and you call that love? Yeah, because I've been praying all these years for somebody to tell me that they love me, that they would like to marry me. He's the only one that has said that. I say, really? I said, did you not know what ancient kings used to do? That they don't wait for the, uh, they don't wait for a man to say that to a woman. They will find another king, somebody already rich, somebody who is a warrior who can fight and defend his people, his nation. And they will say, daughter. We are talking to that man, Samson. That king will bend down to kiss your butt. That king will cook for you. Personally, he will tell his servant, I don't want you to cook today. I'm cooking for my queen. I'm doing her laundry. She is all that I got. And the daughter will go in. Sometimes it does not start out as emotion and along the way develop into the real thing because you will see that that is, that is the character that is needed. Responsibility and duty must come first before emotion, before the kissing and the rest. Emotion should not precede, should not precede responsibility. Mm. She will not. She will not. So rebellion is bad. Stubbornness is not good. When God is telling you, don't do this. Wait. Saul did not want to wait. Saul didn't want to think things through. Saul did not want to focus. And that was when that word was pronounced. Samuel was actually telling Saul, you are a witch. You are a religious witch. Because Saul was very religious. But he was a religious witch. So be careful about people who are coming to you in the name of religion. Because majority of what you are dealing with in the Old Testament that Israel was dealing with in their rebellion and the practice of witchcraft came directly from Baal. Baal is called the God with a thousand faces. He's also called the God of cultures. And all these are languages that are borrowed from our God. Our God is not a God of a thousand faces. He's a God that is in 
that made all things knows all things can be in any way he wants remember that fallen angels are limited they are not in everywhere just know that what Saul was doing in the name of religion was a worship of Baal it was witchcraft his behavior was 100% witchcraft but he was still a worshiper of the God of Israel so he thought majority of what pass as Christianity and Judaism in our today's world and Islam and so on and so forth is a practice of Baal and God is my witness what I'm telling you is true because what people want is to be famous to be rich that's what they want they don't care whether they go to hell because majority of them have already given themselves they've sold themselves and they've sold those who will come to them they've sold them when I began to hear of people talking about that that Corona is a Democrat makeup stuff or a Republican makeup stuff. I, I was very pissed. Because how low can you go? How low can you go? How low? How low are you willing to go to try to, to make yourself relevant as a political party? How low? It's very troubling when I see people thinking that the rest of the people are idiots you can lie to them the day that I was done with the with the Jimmy Swagger and his son was when I saw them attacking Jesse Jackson why do you need to attack him you committed a lot of sins Jimmy Swagger committed a lot of sin and came to the world and beg for forgiveness and the world forgave him and he didn't learn no lesson he has no mercy on anybody he will attack anybody I saw them attacking Kenneth Copeland I said that's them let the devils attack each other anyway and the rest of them that's none of my business Jesse Jackson might not be the best, but leave him in his little corner for him to do whatever he's doing. What has he got to do with you guys? And Jim Baker is out there selling some, some stupid stuff to cure Corona on television. If you've not seen it, I've seen it myself. I was done with Kenneth Copeland when I saw him I saw them not wanting their partners to go and take shots that are going to help people I saw it and I was very pissed I was very very pissed at it it didn't, it didn't make any sense why will somebody in his right mind saw that the medical community has a vaccine that is going to help boys or girls or men or women to prevent a particular sickness why will a pastor or a prophet tell people not to go and get that vaccine why In northern Nigeria, in northern Nigeria, can you believe that the Muslim community are telling their women and their men not to go and vaccinate their children against polio? Do you know that? That the white man is trying to come and kill them through vaccination. Is that true? Is that true? There you go. And they follow the preacher from the mosque. 
they follow the Islamic mask. Yeah, don't vaccinate your children. And those children become crippled. And their own children, they will hide and go and vaccinate their own children. And most of their children, they send them to go and study in overseas. Tell me about it. Don't allow people to put witchcraft on you. Don't allow people to turn you into a rebel. Don't allow them to turn you into a sorcerer. Don't allow people, don't allow you to become a commodity that people use to make money. Because many people, that's what you've allowed yourself to. Bernard Jordan, I'm calling people by name. I'm calling them by name tonight. If they are strong enough, let them go and complain to God or complain to the devil about me. Then I will know how crazy they are. And any of them who belong to the world of darkness, I'm giving you a license for you to go. To voodoo places, to shrine, to everywhere. Take my picture, go there. Tell them to kill me. Because I will turn around while you are asking. <laughs> the guy with the bow and arrow will get you. God gave him to me since I was 10 years old. And he has never left me. Go! Because you think you can do all the bad thing and prophesy bad thing and scam people and then you go to God to go and beg for forgiveness and then to go and attack somebody. Try and attack me. Then Corona will become your own Waterloo. Can you imagine? Bernard Jordan gave an empty purse, an empty bill folder to somebody who left him and came over to my ministry. To a lady. Empty purse and say, give me $10,000 and I'm going to give you this empty purse because God is going to fill it with money. And the idiot wrote a check of 10000 and gave to the man for him to go and enjoy. I'm talking about Ben and Jordan. You guys call him the master prophet. Master prophet my butt. And he went and enjoyed $10,000 for free. And that girl ended up sleeping in his car, became homeless. And the purse has never been filled up till today. People love people who scam them. When people like me want to tell you the truth because I give it to you for free, you don't take it serious. I've told many of you, if anybody bring you a business deal, whether from the internet, over the phone, or mail, call me first. That's how they've scammed so many of you. IRS is looking for you. Social Security are looking for you. And then they ask you to give them money. When did you hear IRS and Social Security are asking people for money? For them to stop a case over the phone. No later. One of them from India called me to tell me that Social Security are looking for me. I said, God punish you and your generation for 10 generations to come if Christ dies. And I told him something and I said, let me tell you, just for calling me, you will be deaf, blind, and dumb. And the person became deaf, dumb, and blind the following day. I'm afraid to tell this kind of stories. And they are calling me here. A Hindu priest is calling me in Wichita, Kansas, asking me to remove the cause that I place on that guy. I said, no. Let him pay me 50,000 US dollars to remove the disrespect. And he said, they are going to find the money. Up till today, he's dumb, blind, and deaf. Let him go on and call people concerning social security and looking for you. Idiot. I curse him because when I'm angry, it's a very dangerous thing. When I'm happy, if I bless you, you remain blessed. If I'm angry and I curse you, remain cursed. 
because that came with my ordination. You bless, they are blessed. You curse, they are cursed. Somebody is calling me from somewhere in Mumbai. The social security are looking for me. Seriously? And you dare answer the phone instead of instead of running away. You should have known better who you are calling. And they, they think it's a game. For me, it's about life. And I told him, you will be deaf, dumb, and blind. And he became that. Another girl called me and was trying to scam me and told me that his father, his father died. I told him, I said, if your father is not dead, your father will die tomorrow morning. You are trying to use your father dying to take money, to extort money from me. I say, if your father is not yet dead, your father will die tomorrow morning and his father and her father died the next day. And she called to complain that I killed the father. But you are the one who called me to tell me that your father died. You're looking for money to go and bury your father. And the Holy Spirit told me, no, the father is not dead. Whatever you say is going to happen. I said to her, if you are lying to me, she said she's not lying. I said, you sure what you're saying? She said, I said, if not, your father will die tomorrow morning. After tomorrow morning, call me. And she, and she called and her people to complain. There are things that you shouldn't do. There is what we call the way of a prostitute, a male or female prostitute. When they call you, or say you meet somebody in the airport, they are already telling you, oh, sir, how are you? Good. And they're already telling you, oh, I'm dealing with this. They're already telling you their problems. I don't want to hear about your problems. Everybody have problems. My daughter is in jail. My son-in-law is this with my daughter. They start telling you their problem. You didn't ask them. That's the footstep of a prostitute. Man or woman. That's the way they are. They will never call you to tell you or they will, you will never meet them and they are telling you a good thing that has happened in their lives. Nothing. Nothing. It's always something bad. That's how you know. Very easy way for you to know the way of a prostitute, a male or a female prostitute. Whenever they are talking to you, whenever they meet you, they are always, wherever they stumble on you somewhere, they constantly are talking about their problems with everybody in order to extort money from everybody. And I hate those kind of lifestyles. The practice of witchcraft comes in diverse forms. Manipulation. Sworn of allegiance to local demons. The practice of the occult and magic. It comes in various forms. Control freaks. People who have not worked for one day in their lives and they want to control those who, who are out there walking and busting their butts to make a living. They want to control everybody. They are constantly talking, 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 talking. They talk to control. That's how you know who is a witch, who is a manipulator. A witch is a constant propagandist and a manipulator. That's how you know them. They constantly talk, even when it's unnecessary. And we allow these people to go on in life. I'm not one of those who say, oh, the Bible says that we should kill a witch. I don't need to kill them. They know how to kill themselves. You don't need to kill them. Just allow them to destroy themselves. Because all you should say is tell the universe or tell God. Let what they are doing take them to where they are going. Let it take them through the route 
they are not willing to go. Let them think that's the right route and they will go and perish there. Then you remain quiet that you don't know what's happening. I want you to look beautiful. I want you to look very nice. I want you to be healthy. If you are the type that like going out, this is not the time for that. Stay away. Don't allow something to be calling you to go out and you go and perish. It's not, it's not allowed. It's not good for you. If witchcraft runs in your home, if it runs in your family, if the spirit of rebellion runs, start thinking carefully and seriously how to deal with it. Don't pray for people to die. Pray for something to take them out. And pray for them to take themselves out. That's it. All you need to do is give somebody what they like the most. Because that is what will eventually destroy them. Saul loved to be king. That's what destroyed. That's what destroyed Saul. He wanted to be a king and control everything. That's why it's also a, a bad thing for you to give power to somebody who has evil ambition. Evil ambition is a wicked thing. It's, that's what we call the practice of witchcraft also. And rulership was given to a man with evil intention and evil ambition. And see what he did in Israel. He put the life of a prophet in depression. Samuel never regained his balance throughout his, life, throughout his days on the earth. Because Saul made life, he made life very terrible for him. I pray that life will be made very good for you. I don't want you to associate with people who make life difficult for you. Any human being whom you found out make life difficult for you. Or when when you are in the front of in with other people, any human being that tried to make fun of you, a mockery, laugh at you, say things that make you look like a, a, a GF uh, G, um, GFN walk away from such people GFN means good for nothing I stand at the airport and I will hear a man the wife is sitting he himself is standing somewhere else receiving a phone call and he is talking bad about the wife that is sitting right there oh forget about her oh just forget about her she's a bitch I hear it. I'm using exactly their words. Why would you say that your wife is the B word? And a few minutes ago, because I'm sitting with them, but because of Diane, because of Diane, I'm eavesdropping. I'm eavesdropping. The wife is sitting there, checking her emails, watching a movie, and we are waiting for the plane, and the husband is darling, and kiss her, you know, and then he walks over to go and take his call, and I'm eavesdropping. At that time, I will walk from there and I will walk towards him. <laughs> and they don't know, he doesn't know, the idiot does not know that I want to eavesdrop and hear who he is. And he's telling, he's telling the person at the other end of the phone that the wife is a bitch. Can you imagine that? And this is the woman that he just kissed just a few minutes ago. And call her darling. How terrible she is. She's a bad cook. She's a good for nothing. I hate her family. I hate her God. I can't wait to divorce her. And I stand back and I, at that time I will remove my thing from there and I walk away from there. Because that's an evil environment. And you just watch as he comes to kiss the wife and hug the wife. I hate that kind of lifestyle. That's the practice of witchcraft right there. Because the woman is, she's not sensitive to what is happening. 
sometimes she doesn't even care and if the man knows that she doesn't care then the man just just is doing his own thing and the woman will stay there and do not know what is going on sometimes women play it on men sometimes men play it on women that's the practice of witchcraft some of his heights and you will be and you will be there you will not know that that man and another woman are applying to kill you Oh, are you sure she's on a, on a, on a, have you, have you, have you put her on life insurance? Yes, I did. I heard it. I heard it. Have you put on life insurance? Yes, I did. Say, that's good. That's good. You know, so that when you divorce her, you know, you know what's happening or when the other things happen, either or. A lot of people are so nasty. I don't get it. I don't really get it. I don't get it. Why do you want the mother of your kids to be killed? Why? For money? Are you serious? For you to get the house? As long as I'm involved, your witchcraft is not going to work on that woman. As long as I am involved, your witchcraft is not going to work on that good man, on that wonderful woman. It's not going to work. Amen. Amen. It is not going to work. Eternal Father, I destroy witchcraft. Whatever anybody plant against my partners will never prosper. It will not work. And if anybody think that he is the general in the army of God on the earth, that what I've spoken today, they are angry at it. Let them be destroyed by their rebellion to change. Because what I'm saying is to provoke people to change. And if they refuse to change, and they decide to take up an arm, they decide to take up arms to fight, then I ask for the military of heaven to shatter and to scatter. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 And amen. Amen. And amen. 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 I'm, I'm just saying it because some people, when they hear this kind of thing, they are like, eh. Hey. They want to prove that they are something. Yeah. They are the ones that God loves. So because of that, because, because of that, you shouldn't say anything about them. Well, when it comes to this universe that I was born into, there is no sacred cow. <laughs> If you want to be a sacred cow, go to India. Yeah, if you want to be a sacred cow, go to India. I don't care whether you are a leader of any nation. If I've spoken against your nation, I don't care whether you are a self-made prophet or God made you prophet or pastor, whatever you think you are. This is a time for you to change. But if you think what I'm saying, if it has hurt you, if it hurts you, I am inviting you to a warfare. Then you will know who I am and who the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is. You will soon know. Because you've been using his name to do business, to do evil business. And I think your days have been numbered. See the, 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 the brokers we've just had tonight is pregnant and weird is pregnant and weird there is a cleaning there is a cleaning that has come and it's gonna go through the entire earth the economy of the earth will be wiped away so this is not about how educated or illiterate you are 
But for those who think they are economically savvy, money savvy, good luck. Because it takes a little flea to wipe away everything. And don't let anybody hear this. But I will tell you. Some of you are asking, where is God that this thing is happening? Don't bring God into it. Change. Don't bring God into this. Because many of you, when you hear things being spoken against your country, whether you are in Nigeria or Kenya or Russia or China or England or Germany, when you hear me say something against your country or India, you pick up arm. I don't like this pastor. He's saying something bad about us. But what about the million times that I've said something good about you? Why don't you think about that? I'm a balanced guy. I've always been known to be balanced. What I'm talking about tonight, I'm begging you to change. Because I know many of you, especially those of you who think you are prophets and pastors, when somebody send this video to you, you say, who is he that he? He's talking against me. Yes, I have the right to, because you are not a sacred cow. If you wanna be a sacred cow, go and live in the streets of India. That's where sacred cows are. But the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. God has sent me as a prophet in my generation and has revealed his name to me. And he said I should go and serve. S-E-R-V-E. -E, and also save. S-A-V-E. -E. I am not into ministry because I'm looking for money. Or looking for fame. Or want to give my family a future through ministry. That's not why I'm in ministry. So I have the right and the power to say what heaven want me to say. Because I didn't come to ministry like you guys came into ministry. I didn't come into politics like you guys came into politics. I came for life. And I am for life. And every other thing outside that, I am permitted to tell you what the throne says. And if you are a good person, you will go and kneel before the throne and repent and change your ways. Benny Hinn has started to repent. I hope, I hope so. It has taken him all these years for him to know what I've known all my life. I ask the Almighty God to bless my partners all over the world. And he will keep you protected and blessed both now and forevermore. Amen, amen, and amen. And if anybody bring you a video of any pastor or prophet or politicians telling you anything contrary to what I've said about the coronavirus, the locusts, just hit the leads. You don't need all that trash. You don't need those people because they are, they are business people. They think that we are stupid. And that we have time to listen to their trash. If I were you, I will make them go bankrupt. Don't give your money to them. Do not send your money to anybody who is asking you to buy this, do this. Uh, this is what God said you should do. This is what... Listen to the medical community. Those are the professionals. Those are the people who are to lead us. Now, no pastor or prophet... A politician should lead us at this time when there is a plague. Listen to the medical community. And that is all I will advise to everybody. And let us do what they say we should do. When the vaccine comes out, all of us should go and get a shot. We should all go and get it. Because you have to be on earth and fulfill your destiny and your assignment. And not allow anybody to come and lie to you. And, and death or a virus will come and take you out before your time. And some pastors and some politicians think that you are stupid because they've always been able to play witchcraft on you. The days of witchcraft are over. Don't allow them to do it. You guys don't know how annoyed I was when I saw TB Joshua trying to prophesy about Corona. I was so pissed at him. I'm telling you, I, I was so angry at him. I have never been that angry at him. I just say, is this man this illiterate and stupid as to come out at this time 
and people are gathering in his church at this time? Are you serious? People are gathering in churches at this time? With what human beings are going through? That's not fair. That is not fair. We should not be doing this to human beings. We need the human race to continue to survive. We don't want to be wiped out by plagues. It's not good. Good night. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.